So for our next speaker, we have Rohit Tanej, who's CEO and founder of Decentro. Uh, a big story to Rohit, a, a serial entrepreneur in fintech uh, with six years um, of experience in multiple companies. I'd have to let him uh, introduce himself. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about an API uh, collection um, to, to power virtual accounts. So this is uh, an ability of an API to connect to any bank's API with just a, a few lines of code. And in so doing, reducing uh, integration time and, and also uh, CapEx. Uh, Well-funded company, so I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this presentation. And again, welcome. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of questions. Please put them in the hop-in chat window. So with that, Rohit, welcome, and uh, looking forward to your presentation. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much for the quick introduction, and uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for having me on stage. Um, great. So just a brief about myself, you know, beyond what Jonathan already covered. Um, so I've been in the fintech and the banking space now for almost seven years and counting. Uh, started my journey uh, before fintech and banking world uh, in Sony in Japan. So uh, I've traveled fairly, uh, you know, for my part uh, across uh, East Asia and Southeast Asia. Um, I was working in Sony in Japan for two years uh, as a product design engineer. I primarily loved tinkering with products, uh, you know, both hardware and software. Uh, came back to India to start a simple social payments company, very similar to Venmo, for those of you that are familiar with the US market. Uh, Venmo, of course, you know, has been hugely successful, eventually became part of PayPal you know, uh, as part of the acquisition um, and went on to do, you know, uh, great uh, as an independent company as well. One second, let me just switch over to full screen mode. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. So, um, yeah, and the idea of Venmo, you know, eventually, as you can imagine, came primarily uh, due to a personal pain point that I faced, you know, as a young entrepreneur uh, and as a millennial, uh, which, you know, a lot of the, uh, people, I'm sure, in the audience as well fall under uh, nowadays, uh, especially entrepreneurs. So we realized that money sharing itself was such a hard challenge. And this is speaking from an Indian perspective, right? Uh, okay. uh, and um, so, yeah, so this essentially became, you know, a crucial problem for us to solve. Uh, to how do we really share money amongst friends with each other? So, um, yeah, essentially, and that's how, you know, the first company, my Poolin, was born. Uh, this was in 2014. We got acquired, you know, to cut the journey short. Uh, uh, we got acquired after two rounds of funding um, in 2017 by a US player called Vimmo, which has been in the payments authentication space. And then we further got reacquired, uh, you know, under a second acquisition in 2019 by a global MNC called PayU, you know, which I'm sure many of you are familiar. It's backed by Naspers and has presence in multiple countries. Um, and over these two last two companies that is over the last three four years i realized how painful the banking integrations are you know, like just working with the bank is so painful right <laughs> both from a business point as well as a technical point, right so um this this essentially led to you know what decentral came uh, to be as a company and of course the first problem that we are solving there uh you know our virtual accounts and pay up so let's get started uh let me just go on to my slides Awesome. I believe you should be able to see the screen. Yeah, awesome. So um, now what exactly do virtual accounts mean, right? And how exactly are we solving this um, to APIs, right? So virtual accounts essentially, you know, as the name implies, these accounts are not really physical accounts, right? So they essentially are, Essentially, it's just like a ledger, you know, that sits as an entry on top of a physical bank account. Right? And the idea there is that you do not really need a physical account to do an accounting, as long as you have a physical repository of the money coming in somewhere, which the bank maintains for you. However, you do need a ledger at your side, right? which essentially syncs up with your CRM, ERP, or your accounting system. Right? Uh, that's essentially what virtual accounts solves for. Now. How is it really different, right, from say a typical money collection process? 
in a typical money creation process, what really would happen, and most of you would be doing this right now uh, as well, and I've seen, uh, you know, most of our peer companies as well do it, uh, you know, over and over again. Um, what they do essentially is they typically just give out, say, for example, if you have to receive an invoice from a customer, right? Um, you essentially give a payment link to them, maybe to make a payment through a payment gateway. Well, that's option one. Or you give them your actual account number right, and the bank code. Uh, there's a physical account number and bank code which belongs to your business. And then the respective company uh, or the customer makes the payment right, using their bank portal. And the money comes into your bank account. Uh, in both cases, as you can imagine, you have to do a manual step where you have to check whether the money has actually hit the bank account. Right? And then once you do that, you first you have to tally, of course, one the amount and the invoice number, the tag ID, whatever you know, your reference ID might be, and then match it with the person. And then, okay, this was the person who was intended to pay me correctly, right? So it's like a two-way disconnect process, right? Where your internal dashboards or your CRMs is not really in sync with the bank state. And there's a manual component involved. And the moment there's a manual component involved, there's a chance of error, right? So this exactly is what a virtual account is also. For. What this allows you is it allows you to create dynamic accounts which are linked uniquely and individually to each and every unique payment. Right? So what that means is you have to make 100 collections from 100 customers every day. You just generate 100 accounts and you can keep recycling them for each and every customer or you can generate a new one every day. Now what will happen is all of these accounts will map to a single virtual account. So a single bank account, a single physical account. And I'll just show you the working as well. And your system, which is the CRM or the ERP, will get a real-time update and callback in the backend automatically without doing it. Right. So what that means is you will never need to go into your bank statement, into your mobile phone, into your SMS history, anywhere to check whether the money came in and when did it come in, who paid, who did not pay. Everything you know is automatically set up. And these are, as you can see, the you know problems that we solve. For. So this was a legacy banking system for me right? that we realized that there is a lack of customization when you work with the banks, right? They give you a standard set of APIs. So we started to make our own customizations to make it extremely simple for SMEs and companies like you, you know, and of course, you know, your network as well, uh, to use these APIs seamlessly. And we brought the entire process down by 10x, both in terms of monetary complexity as well as time complexity. To give you an example, typically, if you go to a bank and do an integration directly, and this is like bank agnostic, any bank in the country, uh, be it Singapore or India, you know, where we implemented these solutions, um, it will easily take you three to four months, minimum, right? Uh, and if you count the agreement signing process and everything, it's, like, it's even more, right? So easily six to eight months uh, from a business plus a tech standpoint. We brought the entire thing down to just two weeks. And two weeks literally means just two weeks. Right? You come in, you sign up with us, right from the first point of conversation to the point of go live, within two weeks, you'll be live. Um, yeah. And then the next thing that you know we realized, which is an extremely crucial one, the first part is the business side. The second side is you know the documentations and the ease of integration. Right? So uh, most of the companies nowadays are driven by developers. Right? They're driven by product people. And they really value that product experience. Right? They really value that uh, Stripe-like experience, which has nowadays become synonymous with API banking platforms or developer platforms. Right? So that's exactly what we provide. Right? Now, these are a few of the you know key uh, reasons why Decentro is you know essentially beneficial in such a manner. And obviously, there are a couple of other companies as well. I'm sure you know, in the respective countries uh, in Southeast Asia. We're just solving for similar challenges on using virtual accounts as one of the key use cases. Let me take you through an example of you know, how a virtual account works in a marketplace scenario, for example. Now, take a, right, a simple marketplace. So you have a buyer network on one side, right, and you have the seller network on the other side. Very standard. Um, and of course, these can be consumers or these can be businesses. So this could be a B2B marketplace or it could be a B2C marketplace. Um, Typical flow, right? A buyer comes in, they register on the marketplace, they do a standard you know, KYC verification, 
mobile number verification, etc. Right? Anytime the moment a buyer comes in, you have the possibility to create a virtual account for the buyer right then and there. Right? So there's no exhaustive KYC required in this case because, as I said, it's not really a physical account. The physical account is still with you. It is just a, you know, a virtual ledger which you maintain at your side. To create a virtual account, this virtual account is, is looks exactly like a bank account. And you give this account number to the buyer for all kinds of payments. This account number can also be embedded inside a QR, right? so which is something you know uh, fairly common, as you know, uh, in Southeast Asia, Singapore, India, of course. Right? So the person can scan the QR, make the payment from his net banking application. Uh, for the India, you can a great use case there. You can get to make payment on the virtual account. Right? The virtual account. It's a creation side. Right? So the buyer is taken care of. The buyer now has a unique account assigned to him at all times right? and can be regenerated as well, as I said, uh, or it can be repurposed and reused for the same buyer over and over again, completely up to you. Right? Uh, once the payment comes in, then you will get an auto automated notification. Your say, CRM or ERP gets an automated notification directly from the bank. Right? And it only hits, uh, the notification only hits when the money is in your bank. Right? So that's a great plus. You don't get any false positives. Right? Uh, once you have the notification, and uh, you know the person has, of course, paid uh, the money is already hidden, you can deduct your commission. So depending on your marketplace model, some marketplaces choose to pay the sellers in advance. Some marketplaces choose to pay them post the purchase. Right? So you can deduct the commission, which could be XYZ, depending on your business model, and then transfer the remaining money you know, directly to the seller. And all of this, right, as you notice, right from the point one, two, three, four, five, all of this is API driven. Everything is just there is no manual process involved at any point of time, no matter whatsoever. Right. Great. So yeah, that's uh, you know a bit on the example side. A few of the key you know uh, things that really help in this seamless onboarding process that we just discussed. It's a purely plug and play APIs. As I said, we give you a strike like experience. Um, and as I said, there are a couple of other companies as well you know, in the market that are doing it. So you know, happy to run through a comparison as well uh, you know, of what Decentro is doing uniquely as compared to what you know, others are doing in the market. But yeah, this is one of the key products that we came out with and has been one of the most successful ones for us you know, as of now. Right. Uh, a very unique point which I would like to highlight here is. If you look at the, and this is different across different countries. So from an Indian perspective, if you look at it, the banking sector is extremely volatile. Right? There's a lot of ups and downs that keep on happening in the banking sector. What that means is there are new private banks that get launched. There are private banks that get merged with each other. There are public sector banks that are getting merged with each other. And this is happening as frequently as almost every quarter. Right? Um, Singapore, of course, is a much more established country than now. Uh, but yes, many of the developing countries in Southeast Asia are still undergoing a lot of flux when it comes to the banking world. So we do not want your business to get hampered due to the regulatory changes or the banking changes happening and underlying. So what we do is we make just one single endpoint to take care of multiple banking integrations of the bank. What that means is in the future, uh, if say one of the underlying banks goes down on which your API is over the line, your business will not get impacted because you would automatically be able to switch the entire stack to a different one. That's a very unique, powerful, you know, uh, I would say, standout that we have done from a tech integration point of view. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, these are a few of the you know industries that uh, have benefited from the virtual accounts API use cases, which we just discussed. So marketplaces, of course, are the prime example that we just went in. Uh, Neo banks are using it. We've seen lending companies use it as well. Gig economy, you know, retail players, of course, finance management, so many. You know, the list is endless. Uh, the embedded banking space is just getting started, as you've noticed, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of the speakers have spoken on that effect as well. So, virtual accounts is like a perfect, you know, low hanging fruit to really get started with the embedded banking use case for your particular industry or your company. Okay, so let me see on the time, I think. Do we have a couple more minutes or should we get to the Q&A?
Well, Rohit, uh, I think that's a good introduction. We could, we, we've got about, uh, well, we have nine minutes remaining. Yeah, don't. I uh, if you, if think you have more examples from the other. Let's see what Q&A Let's see what Q&A Just Let's see what we got. Um, don't have any questions in the Q&A at the moment. Okay. Um, not sure if you've got any other slides to show. You you hinted at other industries, mm -hmm. right? You've talked about marketplaces. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. For we're talking about Singapore here. For Singapore, what, where do you see this sort of fitting into the the ecosystem? The last speaker spoke about neo banks, spoke about mm -hmm. digital banks, and there's been quite a lot of digital banking uh, licenses right. issued. Um, where might this, uh, if I call it, platform? fit in in terms mm -hmm. of not just technology but sure. in terms of the product mm -hmm. integration cycle and that might tie to maturity sure. mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely good question uh i think if you look at the payment flows right in singapore a lot of the payment flows are driven using credit cards right uh, and of course qr has become recently fairly popular uh when it comes to offline payments um qr for sure has a major advantage that it also enables you to reduce the cost per transaction because you're able to actually make a transaction directly from one bank to another bank without necessarily going through the card rules. Right? Um, the same thing is what a virtual account brings to the table, but it also bridges the online gap. Right? So it's harder to use, say, a QR code because it's actually a form factor which is meant for the offline world and less so for the online world. Uh, but a virtual account essentially becomes agnostic. Right? Because it gets embedded both in the QR format for the offline world as well as the, you know, the online world. Uh, and it reduces your costs for the merchant. Right? So your MDR goes down you know, drastically uh, from the merchant side because they are able to bypass the you know, card network. So that's one major thing that comes in. It's a major shift that will happen eventually. And it's already happening. It's already happened in India. It's transitioning to Singapore as well very soon. Uh, you know, with people starting to adopt bank-to-bank -bank payments more than the card payments. Okay, that's quite a transformation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure what people. And I also know your approach is quite bold. I haven't read out the numbers, but it's mm -hmm. there, right? A ten times reduction in integration time yeah. and a reduction of capex of eighty percent, right? right? So. It's it's a bold statement, right? And I just wondered if you have any any examples to give people sure. uh, an aspirate, maybe an, an aspiration for many many organizations. Sure. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you have some examples? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think if you look at uh, and and for I mean the yeah, examples are actually quite a few, but I take one of them. Um, so Zuzu, for example, one of the companies which uh, is a neo bank in India. Um, I speak from uh, the Indian perspective because in Singapore we're fairly new right now. Uh, you know, uh, it could take us a while to really get some metrics out there. But yes, from a Indian perspective, uh, Zuzu is a fairly new and upcoming neo bank uh, in India. And uh, these guys started out from uh, local areas in Mumbai, the west of India, and now they're expanding across the country. Uh, typically, when they were trying to bank with the one of the other leading banks in the country. They spent four months just doing a back and forth discussion uh, to use virtual accounts, right? Uh, they came to us around July last year, July 2020. And by August end, that is uh, in four weeks, they were up and running you know, on production with virtual accounts. So this was a good, you know, I would say like a perfect example to see a new a company, a new new bank starting out you know, and just going live in a matter of a few weeks as compared to a few months you know, uh, using the APIs. Right? So that was a drastic reduction, almost 10x, in terms of both time as well as the money spent. Uh, because eventually, they didn't have to do any you know, discussion on you know, uh, like maintenance or operational expenditure with the banking side. We were able to take care of everything. So both CapEx and OpEx went down by up to 80%. OK. So were there, are there any low-hanging fruits that people can look, look at in terms mm -hmm. of from a transaction point of view, an event point of view, or even an architectural point of view. Because many of this, it may not be initiated from the business, right? Or from the leadership. It might come yeah. from, uh, it's a technical track. It might come from uh, the technologists, right? Or the dev teams. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I think, yeah, so one of the key things that, if I speak of it from a business point of view, um, the devs, for sure, as you rightly mentioned, right, uh, the devs will look at the quality of the documentation, uh, the quality of the product cycle, right? That is something which is sacrosanct for them, right? And uh, I, I think that is increasingly the future where, as I mentioned, most of companies are now driven by devs and product people uh, as compared to business people. Um, but yes, we do have to recognize that ultimately a company has a business to run at the end of the day. They cannot just rely on uh, technical nitty-gritties. They do have to look at the overall experience from a security, comprehensiveness, compliance point of view. So we take care of all of that. Uh, right. um, so to... Yeah. It really helps from uh, you know, a business point of view or a metric point of view is if we can show them the upfront time and money advantage carrying over to the long term. Right? So that is why the whole CapEx and the OpEx number comes into play. Okay, so I, I, I think it's, it, it, you know, it has to be taken in the right light. There's going to be use cases yeah. that this is good for versus building mm -hmm. up on, on yep. their existing stack, right? Mm -hmm. And like you mm -hmm. said, it's got to be adopted through the comfort with the documentation. Right. Now, we have just three minutes remaining here. Sure. Uh, we've got a, 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 an audience chat in Hopin, so I encourage everyone okay. just to, to throw their questions out. Will you be around after this presentation? How can people contact you? They have to go away and think about this maybe. What, what's the best way to do this? Will you be around for the chat or is there a way people can contact you? Yeah, I'm here for the chat and uh, I mean, I'm always available on email as well. Uh, I'm happy to drop in my email ID as well uh, you know, for a more uh, you know, detailed, longer conversation if required. Uh, yeah, or I'm on Twitter, you know, uh, at Sunny Boy Rohit. And, and in terms of your company, you're sort of a digital native, right? How can, how can people get, get to know you more? Would you have a sandbox environment? Would you have representation in Singapore? Or what's, yep. what's, what's, what's available and what's the plan? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So we are a Singapore domiciled company. Uh, you know, the headquarters are in Singapore. Uh, the most of, most of the team is, of course, uh, remotely located right now, given the circumstances. Um, we do have a sandbox uh, up on the website. Uh, if you just go on, you know, decentral.tech, they'll be able to see a developer's portal right up on the top right uh, on the website okay. itself. Uh, it's fairly easy to, you know, use. You can just click on it, play around with the APIs. All the examples, you know, scenarios, success, failure, everything is you know, fully detailed out there. There's fully full-fledged working sandbox for them to play around with. Yeah. Fantastic. With with documentation, like you say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so fantastic, Rohit. We're at the top of the hour, exactly, awesome. right? Awesome. So, um, look, uh, love to hear more about your other enterprises, yeah. your journey. But look, I'm wishing you very good luck with Decentro and the the you know and the ambitions. And let, let's let's hope it it enables uh, that customer experience, right? Whether it's a digital bank or a neo bank. Okay, thank you. Thanks so very much. much. So, thank you. So. Thank you.